Hello students, in this lecture we are going to talk about variable. The term variable is very common. In our real life, we all use this term on daily basis. Now, what is the meaning of variable? It is a characteristic or a phenomena which is capable of being measured and changes its value over time. So, it refers to that quantity which is subject to change and which can be measured by some unit. For example, if we measure the weight of students of 11th class, it would be a variable. It can be either discrete or continuous. Now, the first one is discrete variable. Discrete variable can take only certain values. Its values changes only by finite jumps. It jumps from one value to another but does not take any intermediate values between them. For example, a variable like the number of students in a class for different classes would assume values that are only whole numbers. It cannot take any fractional value like 0.5 because half of a student is absurd. So, it simply takes the full value, for example, if there are 20 students in a class or there may be 15 students in a class. The next one is continuous variable. As the name indicates, continuous itself means in continuity. A continuous variable can take any numerical value. It may take integral values 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on, fractional values 1 by 2, 2 by 3 or 3 by 4 and values that are not exact in their fractions like under root of 2 is equal to be 1.4, 1 and 4 and so on. For example, the height of a student as he or she grows from 90 centimeters to 150 centimeter would take all the values in between them. It can take values that are whole numbers like 90 centimeters, 100 centimeters or 108 centimeters and so on. But it can also include various fractional values too. It may be 90.85 centimeters or 102.34 centimeters and so on that cannot are whole numbers. Now the next aspect is raw data. A mass of data in its crude form is simply known by the name of raw data. It is an unorganized mass of various items and yet to be organized by investigator. To illustrate, marks obtained by 24 students of class 11th in statistics are, they are given in the form of a table. It may be 20, 42, 59, 99, 25, 32, 31, 18 and so on. By looking at this number of the mass, collection of this marks of students, we cannot predict anything, we cannot find any conclusion, we cannot analyze it. On the other hand, if this kind of information or if these kind of marks are presented in a proper manner that can be used for a statistical analysis or the investigation. So now we are going to talk about conversion of this raw data into various kind of series. Now what is the meaning of series? It simply refers to those data which is represented in some order or sequence or arranging data in different classes according to given order. It is known by the name of series. Now Frequency distribution. Frequency distribution is a comprehensive way to classify raw data into quantitative variables. It shows how the different values of a variable like the marks in the mathematics scored by a student are distributed in different classes along with their corresponding class frequencies. Now, what is the meaning of class limit? Each and every class in a frequency distribution is bound by a class limit. Class limit means it is the two ends of a class. The lowest value is known by the name of lower class limit 
and the highest value of the class is known as upper class limit. For example, the class limit for the class 60 to 70 is the 60 is the lower limit and 70 is the upper limit. Now, its interval or class interval or class width is almost the same thing. It is the difference between upper class limit and the lower class limit. For the class 60 to 70, the class interval is 10. That is upper class limit 70 minus lower class limit 60 comes out to be 10. The class midpoint or class mark is the middle value of any class. It lies halfway between the lower class limit and the upper class limit of a class. For example, if our class interval is from 10 to 20, then midpoint must be 15. How I have calculated 15? By doing the summation of 10 plus 20 comes out to be 30. When I do its half, it comes out to be 15. So 15 would be my mid value. Now, how to prepare a frequency distribution? We need to answer four questions. After answering these four questions, it is very easy to prepare a frequency distribution. The first one is, how many classes we should have? The second one is, what should be the size of each class? Third one is, how should we determine the class limits? Fourth is, how should we get the frequency for each and every class? Now, we need to elaborate each and every point in detail. The first one is, how many classes should we have? Variations in the variable's value are captured by its range. The term range is also very common and it is also being used by each and every layman in their life. But in economics, the term range means it is the difference between the largest and the smallest value of a variable. A large range indicates the value of the variables are widely spread. On the other hand, small range indicates the value of the variables are spread narrowly. Range is the sum of all class intervals. If the class intervals are equal, then range of the product of the number of classes in the class interval of a single class can be calculated as range is equal to number of the classes multiplied by class interval. What should be the size of each class? We can determine the number of classes once if we decide the class interval. That means after deciding a class interval, for example, if a class interval would be of 5 or if it would be of 10, it would become more easier for us to find out the number of total classes. How should we determine the class limit? The value of the upper class limit of a class is obtained by adding the class interval with the value of the lower class limit of that class and how we decide the lower class limit of the first class. For example, why 0 is the lower class limit for the first class of 0 to 10? It is because we choose the minimum value of the variable as the lower limit of the first class. For example, the upper class limit of the class 20 to 30 is 20 plus 10 is equal to 30, whereas 20 is the lower class limit and 10 is the class interval. This method will be repeated for the other classes as well. Now, we are having two different methods for arranging it. The first one is exclusive method. As the name indicates, here we are going to exclude some series. How? The classes by this method are formed in such a way that upper class limit of one class equals the lower class limit of the next class. In this way, the continuity of data is being maintained. That's why the method of classification is most suitable in case of data of continuous variable. Under this method, the upper class limit is excluded. 
but the lower class limit of the class is included in the interval. In our example, on marks of students, the observation 40 that occurs twice in the raw data is not included in the class 30 to 40, but it will be included in the next class interval that is 40 to 50. Why is it so? Because we are talking about exclusive series. Why they, it is being termed as exclusive? Because we have excluded 40 from the previous class interval and we have included 40 in the next class interval. The next one is inclusive series. As the name indicates, now we are going to include that particular series on the same class interval. This method does not exclude the upper class limit in the class interval. It includes the upper class in the same class. Thus, both class limits are part of the same class interval. For example, if we are having income from 800 to 899 and the number of employees are 50, then it is the 50 is not included. That means till 899 our series is completed. Now we are going to start from 900 till 999, then 1000 to 1099. It simply means that we are going to include any persons or the number of employees whose income is between 800 to 899 only and the persons whose income will increase from 900 to 999 they'll come in the next class interval i think it has become more clear by seeing the difference between exclusive and inclusive series in exclusive series the upper limit of a class interval is counted in the next immediate class or in inclusive series the upper limit of the class interval is counted in the next same class. Second difference is the upper limit of a class interval and the lower limit of the next class interval is same. For example, it may be like 5 to 10, 10 to 15, 15 to 20 and so on. The second difference of inclusive series is the upper limit of a class interval and the lower limit of the next class interval is different. How? For example, it may be 10 to 14, 15 to 19 and so on. The next type of series is open end series. What is the meaning of open end series? In it, lower limit of the first class and upper limit of the last class is not given. Words like below and less than are written in the case of lower limit and like over and above are written in the case of upper limit. For example, we are having a table. In this table, we are having marks and number of students. In marks, it is written like below 20 and at last it is written as above 50. So that means we are talking about this type of series. The next one is cumulative frequency series. What is the meaning of cumulative frequency series? It is a modification of simple frequency distribution and it is obtained by successively adding the frequencies of the values of the classes according to a certain law. It can move from top to bottom or from bottom to top. So it is the example of less than cumulative frequency distribution. Again, we are having a table in which marks are taken from 0 to 10 till 50 to 60. And the number of students are 2, 5, 10, 12, 17 and so on. It can be explained in the form of cumulative frequency. Now less than 10 that is equal to 2, less than 20 is equal to 7. How I have got this 7? 7 we have got by adding 2 plus 5 in the similar manner. The next how we have obtained 17? 17 could be obtained by adding the successive unit and so on. 
This is known by the name of cumulative frequency series. The next series is mid value series. It is the middle value of each and every class interval. It can be explained by calculating the difference between the two mid values. Then the half of difference is subtracted and added to each mid value to find out the upper and lower limit of the next class. The next one is bivariate frequency distribution. It can be explained by talking about two types of analysis. The first one is univariate distribution and the second one is bivariate. As the name indicates, univariate distribution simply means that we are going to talk about a single variable. On the other hand, if we take two variables simultaneously, that means we are talking about bivariate frequency distribution. It can be explained with the help of this table. This is a kind of table which is given by a production house in which on one axis we have taken the advertisement expenditure, on other we have taken the increase in the sales. So we can say like that there are three firms who are using or who are increasing or who are finding the increase in their sales by using more and more in advertisement. So, in this we are making use of two variables simultaneously. So, it is an example of bivariate frequency distribution. Each cell shows the frequency of corresponding row as well as column values. Now, how should we get the frequency for each class? In simple terms, frequency of observation means we have been using the term frequency for so many times. But what does it mean? It simply means that how many times the observation occurs in the raw data. Finding class frequency by telemarking. A tele is put against a class for each student whose marks are included in that class. For example, if the marks obtained by a student are 57, we will put a tele against the class 50 to 60. If the marks are 71, a tally is put against the class 70 to 80. The counting of tally is made easier when four of them are put as four slanting lines and the fifth tally is placed across them as it. Tallies are then counted as group of five. So, if there are 16 tallies in a class, we put them as five, five, 5 and 1 for the sake of convenience. Conclusion. So, at end, what we have learnt in today's lecture, we have talked about organization of data, we have talked about classification of data, which means arranging the similar kind of data in various groups. We have talked about types of classification, which can be chronological, geographical, quantitative and qualitative. We talked about frequency distribution and we discussed the meaning of series, exclusive series, inclusive series and so on. And we also explained the type of analysis univariate as well as bivariate too. So, it can be concluded like this, the data collected from primary and secondary sources are raw or unclassified data. Once the data is collected, the next step is to classify them for the further statistical analysis. Classification brings orders in the data, that's why it is very, very important. So, in our next lecture, we are going to start with a new chapter, that is chapter number 4, presentation of data. In this chapter, we are going to talk about how data can be presented in the form of tables, polygons, pie charts and different diagrams. So, in the meanwhile, enjoy yourself and keep reading. Thank you.